me. So Nintendo has been busy this week with a dynamic duo of release date drops. So Xenoblade Chronicles uh, 3, sorry, is dropping 29, maybe I get the right one up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, 29 July. Up. That's all good. Uh, which is over a month earlier than the original September release window. I do love Nintendo fans. I am a Nintendo fan. And people getting really annoyed with the following one, which is Splatoon 3, which has now been officially announced as the 9th of September, where people have said, what the hell? This has been delayed. This is meant to be in summer 2022. So there's North American summer, right? The thing is, like, summer is not, like, ending in August. Like, in North America, summer is, like, I think all the way to the... 22nd of September. So it's still in that same window. I find the people getting annoyed. The game, like, <laughs> September's not that far away. Like, what the hell? You know? No, but it's more like they're saying, oh, it's been delayed. And quite honestly, I think the game has been delayed. So when, when this was announced that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was being moved forward, I'm like, hey, I want to talk about this. Like, this has to mean that Splatoon is getting delayed or, like, getting pushed back a little bit to get more time. And then, like, within, what was it? Like, two days, like, as you've written. Yeah. Bang, here's Splatoon 3, and here's the date for Splatoon 3. It's like, this is so obvious that these games switched order. It's just crazy to me that Xenoblade, the Xenoblade games, and I've only played the first Xenoblade Chronicles for maybe about five hours. Um, they're so massive in scope, and there's so yeah. much production value to them, but they just seem to make them so quickly in terms yeah. of, like, relative time for game development the fact that xenoblade chronicles 3 was ready to be moved up i know that's just, amazing <laughs> monolith soft can they they're like from from soft like what is these soft d developers you know they, <laughs> they must bend space and time to create their game yeah. that's funny because and you know they're also working on breath of the wild 2 because they worked on breath of the wild 1 they they did all the sort of you know the landscape and the settings and all that all the well, settings like that. yeah well they're amazing at that right but you're right like when did Xenoblade Chronicles one come out was that like two thousand and nine ten something oh, ballpark like that I don't know but there's been four of them now like including this new one so yeah that's what that's where I was getting at it's like how insane is the production of like these massive games like Xenoblade Chronicles X which it I don't know are they ever gonna bloody release that. Really yeah, it was 2010, 2010. Release it on the Switch, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Hmm. Like, it feels weird to me that they didn't bring that out on the Switch. It feels like just such a free hit, you know? Yeah, like, and these games have so much voice acting and, yeah. and, and like, so much in them that it's just crazy. Um, I, I don't know my uh, issue with Xenoblade Chronicles, but I, like, own all the Xenoblade Chronicles games. And not have played more than like a couple of hours of any of them. Like I'm even talking about, I've got Torna, the Golden Country, like physical, which is like fairly rare. Um, I don't know why. I just, I love the the design of it. I love like the setting. I love everything. But then I start playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I'm like, ah, oh, no, I need to go back to Xenoblade Chronicles it, 1 first. So. It's funny. I've got like a PS2 special edition of Xeno Saga Part 2. Ah, which is nice. Which soft as well. Nice. And I've never played it because I don't have Part 1 on nice. my PS2. But um, honestly, the actual trailer, when I watched it for Xenoblade Chronicles 3, like, man, that game looks really good. Like, the battle system UI, everything's like, man, this is so... looks slick, you yeah. know? Like, it's kind of crazy. Um... I'm, I'm happy and, to, and to, to ship you down my Xenoblade Chronicles games if you want. Well, I've got, I've got, I've got it to play on the Switch. Uh, the oh, re, you've got, you got the, the definitive remaster edition. Of, yeah, of, the, of, the <laughs> of one. one. That's funny. Um, okay, but look, look at on the footage at the moment. Look how nice the battle UI looks. Oh, it looks so amazing. Good, yeah. man. And then you've got a game of bloody Pokemon. Anyway, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's all yeah. So I mean, like Nintendo did steal my thunder. Like Splatoon three being announced, I am like ultra hyped about this game i will i like i definitely don't want to dox myself but there's reasons why i want to you know take a day off around that time anyway which i will but now this game's coming out on the friday i'm like okay i'm gonna take friday off work uh and i'm gonna get this digitally swinny you'd be proud of me i'm gonna oh, get a nice. digital i'm gonna get it like day one so i might start playing it at midnight jump in the game and then also you know how they have those uh those Hey, they have it in Australia and Europe, I think, where you can buy like a pass to buy two games, like a game voucher. 
I should check if they still sell it actually. And it's like you get it like for certain percentage off. For these kind of games, it's actually it does work out pretty well. I'm gonna get that voucher because I've been waiting for two games to buy, right? And now this is gonna be the second one. Now the first game that I'm gonna buy digitally finally is Smash Brothers. <laughs> It's funny you say that. I um, I was around at my nephews and nieces or my sister's place, but yeah, yeah. and I took um, I took a couple of Switch games with them for them to play while I was there, and one of them was Smash Brothers, and I left it there and I'm on purpose, and I'm like, <laughs> did I do that the so to, for, to force myself to buy the digital version of Smash Brothers like you just did, <laughs> so I don't have to swap the card each. Yeah, I, I, it's such. I know this is like maybe one of the greatest first world problems ever right oh, or examples of it but it genuinely does bother me for multiplayer games switching the card out and from that time on with with smash brothers i just decided i'm never going to do it again i'm not like any game that's predominantly multiplayer i'm just going to get digital because it's going to shit yeah. me too much so so no splatoon 3 like just quickly on it like super hyped about this the footage looks awesome I mean, the biggest criticism I have is it looks like more Splatoon, which is awesome. But looking at it, I'm like, I mean, I could show you this and go, this is Splatoon 1. And I've actually like tricked you, Swinney. This is the B-roll for Splatoon 1. <laughs> the, the question, like you're not going to be 100% sure, right? <laughs> the question is though, other than adding just more to yeah. the same thing, what else do you do with Splatoon as a multiplayer game? Obviously, you can do different stuff with single-player content. Yeah. But what else do you do? Well, but I think it's very easy for Nintendo because, let's be real, like, I love Nintendo and I love Splatoon. Like, I've played Splatoon on the Wii U and then Splatoon 2 on the Switch and, like, put in, like, I don't know, 100 plus hours. I've got to say, like, the, the party system... If I compare it to Halo 3, which was like, what, 2008? It sucks, man. It's embarrassing. It's it look, literally embarrassing for me because I was like telling you, hey, you got to play Splatoon 2, da, da, da. We jump on. It's like, oh, wait, no, we, we can't be in the same party. We have to have like four people to play four on four. And I, you know what a mess it was, right? Yeah, 100% agree. I'm talking like when people just looking at the moment to moment gameplay, not oh, the sure, systems sure. behind it. Like, what else do you do to that? But 100% with the party, like, yeah. And that's from someone that's probably played it an hour. <laughs> yeah, know? but you, you know, <laughs> even on that, that though, Swinny, period, so. I think that that's just like Counter Strike, like, uh, realistically, Call of Duty. Like, all of those games, they don't really evolve that much, right? But. I think everyone's happy with the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. It's all the stuff around it, the quality of life, I think that people care more about. And I think for me, like Splatoon, how it works mechanically is like, they pretty much perfected it in Splatoon 1. It's everything around it. Like, I love the the art. The art's amazing in the music, but the systems of like parties and all this kind of stuff, it's fucking annoying. It's so, it's like really detrimental to the game. Like Rocket League, I... I know it's like a high bar, but if they just had the same systems as Rocket League, I'd fucking would play so much Splatoon. Like I'd be on that shit all the time because like the, like online working well, like I have to say, if the online works way better than Splatoon 2, I'm going to be playing a lot of this game because Splatoon 2's online's horrible. Like I have a rock solid connection and I get like timeouts and dropouts and shit like that. So, but I outside would, uh... of that, let's, let's go into the, the rest of the release schedule because. Okay. Like, I'm just, like, looking at it. Like, I kind of forgot that Switch Sports is coming out this week for Nintendo. I'm going to get onto that. Um, and then Mario Strikers is in June, like, the start of June. I'm, like, on the fence about that. I don't know where you sit on that. Oh, look, I, I never got a chance to try the original GameCube, so um, I'm sure it's great. I've heard it's great. Yeah, I've played a bit of the original on GameCube, and I love it. It might be one of my favorite sports titles for mario like nintendo outside of you know mario kart if you call that a sports title i i'm just very wary because the last few outings like the golf outing all the stuff it's sort of like they're good but they just like lack that nintendo next level polish for me mm. so i'm not gonna jump on it the one i am gonna jump on is fire emblem warriors which is uh the three hopes so you know very similar to what they did with age of calamity uh with breath of the wild I wasn't going to buy this originally. And then I'm like, you know what? I love that Age of the Cla Age of Calamity game so much. Like it did shocked you, me how much I enjoyed that. Did you ever try the first one? Yeah. Yeah. So I played that on the Wii U 
And I liked it, but I think the thing is, I'm just not very familiar with the characters. Yeah, yeah. So that's like a massive thing, right? Whereas with Three Houses, I love the characters in Three Houses. Like jumping back to Three Houses, I was like, damn, I love the characterization of these people. Like it's really fun. So yeah, I looked at Warriors. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to get it, stuff it. Like it's it's an awesome game to just plow in some dumb time. Um, then obviously they've got Pokemon, the next gen Pokemon games coming out later this year. That's, how crazy is it we've got more Pokemon coming out this year? But that's what like they always they, do. That's what they do no, every two I'm, years. It's, Yep, no, but I'm saying like with the trace, yeah, Arceus, okay, or Arceus, yeah, sorry, whatever. Yeah, Arceus, it's yeah. like it, Arceus. It, it just feels like that was so recent, you know. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And I, I felt like there was a bit of a hole in the lineup, but I do look at it, and I know you've like done a good job here of like, you know, you got the Mario movie coming out before Christmas this year, which is going to be massive, right? And I always thought there's going to be a Mario game this year, but maybe not with the Mario movie coming out. Maybe that doesn't actually make sense. I don't know, like maybe it makes more sense after the Mario movie, like, you know, Mm. three to six months after that movie, you know, if it's like a big success, having a game come out straight after that, it's just going to sell more, so... I mean, they could always do, if they wanted something at the same time or in that era, they could always do like a little bit of an expansion thing for Odyssey. Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh man, a DLC, dude, yeah, you're speaking my language now. But But like what, just think what they did, you know... um, Obviously, they're they're now doing DLC for a bunch of their games, yeah. but Mario has just never really been a DLC kind of game. But the closest thing is, and it's very different, but is obviously Bowser's Fury. So yeah. it's kind of like I could almost see them doing something like that again, you know. But for Odyssey, this yeah, time. No, that's true. Um, and, and you know, like they never had DLC for Zelda, and they did that with Breath of the Wild. I think, look, under the new um, president, he's like he literally came in saying we need to sell more. To when people enjoy our games, like essentially going, we need to sell more DLC. Which Nintendo, <laughs> they, they, they don't make enough money. We need to make more money. <laughs> no, but like I, you know, I know that people will say I'm a Nintendo fanboy. I, I'll whatever. I don't know. I'll cop that. Whatever. But I think whenever they do DLC, generally it's pretty good value. Like the, th- the like three houses is a bit iffy. Like I think the Zelda expansion stuff was awesome. Like, what they're doing with Mario Kart, that's like $25 Australian, I think. Like, if you want to get it that way. For another, like, doubling the tracks. Um, but then I did I did double check, and I looked at their, um, their financials as well. And then also the fact that you can actually uh, pre-order these games. But, yeah, like, it, it does seem like Bayonetta 3 and Mario and Rabbids is still pretty much on track to come out this year. Hmm. So if that's the case, that's, they're actually going to be pretty big games. Like, I think Mario Rabbids is going to do a lot more business than I think people are expecting. Because that first game's awesome, and I wonder if a lot of people were like, oh, I didn't jump on it, but this is a good opportunity to just jump on the next one. Uh, Bayonetta 3 is a massive game anyway, so I think they're pretty much set for the rest of the lineup uh, for this year. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to be buying a lot of Nintendo games, I think. Um, <laughs> and, and completing them all to keep a... Well, I, I, can I just say quickly, I am going to... I am being influenced by my own resolution and I'm not going to buy Live a Live or Live Alive or whatever you want to call when it. When is that coming out again? It's really soon. It's coming out uh, 22nd of July. Oh, okay. So like right next to um, next to Xenoblade Chronicles, right? It's kind of crazy. It's like one week before. I like. I think with the whole cro- like Chrono Trigger stuff, I'm like... I'm not the biggest fan of these like JRPGs in reality. Like I love Final Fantasy VI. I love specific ones, but just in general. And then I looked at the art again and some more trailers and some more recent trailers that are coming out the last few weeks. And I'm like, I like the way it looks, but I don't love the way it looks. And I still haven't finished Triangle Strategy. So I'm just not going to buy it for the sake of buying it. So I do think that that game, putting my mic hat on, I feel like that game will go up in price, the physical version of it. It's just one of those niche titles that I don't imagine they're going to make millions of copies. And it's going to be one of those ones that people feel like you have to collect for, I think, at least. But anyway, but um, yeah, I'm not going to... Well, yeah, I've got to think about whether I want to buy it as an investment. All right, <laughs> moving on to our final segment. And I think this is going to be you 